So this short video gives you some feedback on the first practical, the vanadium titration. So what we were looking for in the write-up was um, some clear calculations, advanced equations and assessment of the errors present. So first of all, you need to note down the mass of ammonium metavanadate that you used. Um, so I've got some model data here based on 2.31 grams of the vanadate. So you want to calculate the number of moles of this. Um, so you divide the mass by the formula mass, which if you looked it up was 116.98. Um, and so this gives you 0 0.0198 moles of uh, vanadate, so 0 0.0198 moles of vanadium. And this you dissolved up in 250 centimetres cubed to make up your standard solution. Now you could calculate the concentration of that solution and then calculate the um, mass, the number of moles rather, of vanadium in each 25 centimetre aliquot that you used for reactions A, B and C. Or you could simply say there was 0 0.0198 moles in 250 centimetres cubed. Um, and so therefore in 25 centimetres cubed there was obviously a tenth of that, 0 0.00198 moles. And we'll need that amount in each of the following calculation steps. So then for each reaction we need to consider how much permanganate we used. And we need to bear in mind the reaction uh, equation that was given on the practical handout which says that for each mole of permanganate you require five moles of electrons because the electrons are the bit that is um, oxidising the vanadium in 4, 3 or 2 back to vanadium 5 and so what we need to know is how many electrons are being given up by the vanadium to the permanganate so this ratio is is important I'm going to perform the calculation for reaction A based on using exactly 20 centimetres cubed of permanganate don't forget you need to convert this into decimetres cubed if you're going to um, calculate number of moles um, and the number of moles is the concentration times the volume so we're going to times it by 0 0.02 molar, which was the concentration of permanganate, which again was in the practical booklet. So we have 0 0.004 moles of permanganate, and what we want to know is the number of moles of electrons. So that in fact is just going to be 5 times the number of moles of permanganate, if you base it on the equation above. Um, and so we have 0 0.002 moles of... So what we need to do now is compare the number of moles of electrons, which we had, which was 0 0.002, with the number of moles of vanadium, which was 0 0.00197. So you can see quite clearly that that's almost a one-to-one -one ratio. So what that means is that every mole of vanadium gave up one mole of electrons. Therefore, we must have been going 4 plus to 5 plus. What we can also do is calculate an error. So what we want to do is consider the difference between the actual number of moles used, 0 0.002, and what we would expect to be used uh, in terms of number of moles of electrons if all of the vanadium had effectively been reduced and oxidised, which is 0 0.00197. So, um, and I'm going to abbreviate this slightly rather than put in all the 0, 0.00. So what we've got is 2 minus 1.97 divided by the expected answer, which is the 1.97 times by 100, which will give us our so our error is 1.5%. So this is pretty good data, and you could have calculated the percentage error for each of your three calculations in the same way, and that's something that unfortunately nobody did. What I also expected for each titration was a balanced equation for what was happening. And what you need to bear in mind, which some of you didn't, is what the actual species are in solution. So vanadium-5 is not vanadium-5 plus AQ, it is in fact VO2 plus. And so we need to consider what happens to that in, uh, in solution um, and the reaction between vanadium 5 and vanadium 4. So if you either look it up, I think from the workshop I considered this one, 
or work it out, uh, you would end up with an equation that looked like this. So we've got our vanadium 5, which is VO2+, plus, plus an electron, two protons, gives us our vanadium 4 species in solution. And what we need to do is to balance this with the reduction half equation for the permanganate. And we need to bear in mind, of course, that the vanadium reaction um, is an oxidation reaction. So the vanadium, in this case, is vanadium-4 giving up an electron. Uh, so we'd need to switch the top equation round to be the other way round, so that the electrons are on the right-hand side. And also we need the electrons to balance. So what we're going to do is also multiply the top equation by 5. So what you should end up with for the uh, top equation is this. Okay, and what we can now do is we can uh, start to cancel the species that appear on both sides of the equation. So we can cancel our five electrons, which appear on both sides. Uh, we can cancel some H+, so we've got 8H+, on the left at the top, and 10H+, on the, right left, on the right sorry, at the bottom. So we can get rid of the 8 and change that to a 2. Uh, we've also got five waters on the bottom on the left, and four waters on the top on the right. So again, we can cancel those four and remove the five from there. And so what we end up with overall is a balanced equation for what happens in our titration, which looks like this. OK, so if you add that up, you should find that the vanadiums are equal on either side, that there are 10 oxygens on either side, and that overall the charges balance as well. So I was expecting something like that for each of the three reactions. Now one thing that nobody did, which was slightly disappointing, was explain what happened in B, and why you filtered your lilac solution through glass wool into an excess of vanadium-5, and how you therefore ended up with a, a bright blue solution, um, very similar in colour to your number A, which was um, vanadium-4, and why you ended up with so much permanganate needed for the titration. So the problem with vanadium-2 is it's very air-sensitive. It's easily oxidised by the air to vanadium-3, which essentially is what you did in part C. But in part B, we didn't want that to happen because we wanted to um, titrate all of the vanadium-2 against permanganate. However, as I said, you can't actually do that. So what you do is you add it to an excess, in fact, a two-fold excess, of the vanadium-5. And what happens is that the vanadium-5 is reduced to vanadium-4, and the vanadium-2 is oxidised by vanadium-5 to vanadium-4 also. So you end up with three times the amount of vanadium-4 as you originally had of vanadium-2. Now, if you considered titrating both of these mixtures against permanganate, if you were going to titrate, if you were able to titrate um, two lots of vanadium-5 and one lot of vanadium-2 against permanganate, what you would be going to get is entirely vanadium-5, which is what happens in your titration. And hopefully you can see there that the two vanadium-5s don't require any electrons to go for, to vanadium-5, but the vanadium-2 would take three electrons to complete that process. If we then titrated instead our three lots of vanadium-4 to three lots of vanadium-5, you can see that that is also going to take three electrons, this time one electron uh, for each of the vanadium, so three in total. So you can see that in terms of the titration, whether you titrate the vanadium-2 to vanadium-5 or the three vanadium-4s to vanadium-5, you end up with the same um, answer, the same amount of permanganate, the same amount of electrons required which is why you do this, because it stabilises the vanadium to, um, to enable us to do the titration. Again, bear in mind that what I've done here is I've slightly simplified the equation. This isn't 
meant to be balanced in that um, the Vanadium 5 and the Vanadium 4 are obviously the previously mentioned species, not as I've drawn them. But in terms of this as an illustration for what happens in that reaction, it's much simpler this way. The other thing we need to consider, um, and what I was looking for, was a discussion of the error. So as I said before, you could quantify the error um, quite easily by calculating the percentage difference between what you um, achieved in your titration and what you expected, but you also need to be able to explain away um, that error. And so if we start with A, what quite a lot of people discovered is that you actually use more permanganate when you did A than uh, you expected. And the reason for this is that when you initially uh, did the synthesis and you added the metabisulfite and you boiled the solution uh, in the fume hood to make it go bright blue, you were converting vanadium-5 to vanadium-4 uh, with the metabisulfite acting as a reducing agent. Now, if you didn't manage to remove all of that metabisulfite when you were boiling the solution, what that can actually do in the titration is it can also reduce your manganese 7 to manganese 2 in the titration step. And so what you end up doing is using more permanganate than you would otherwise expect because it's not all being reduced by the vanadium 4, some of it's being produced by the metabisulfite. So that's the main reason why in A you tended to use a little bit more permanganate than you would expect, and so you ended up with a ratio of instead of 1 to 1, more like 1, point, 1 to 1.1, 1, 1 to 1.2. For B and C, the um, explanations as to why you ended up usually using less permanganate than expected are in some respects uh, slightly simpler and, and, and just due to, due to experimental techniques. So for those ones, you tended to end up, let's say instead of a, a 1 to 3 ratio, we'd end up with a 1, .2 to, 1 to 2.8 ratio for part B. Um, and this is mainly due to two reasons. One, incomplete reduction in the first place. So unless your solution had completely reduced and the zinc had stopped um, reacting, had stopped producing hydrogen, stopped bubbling in, in the solution, um, then you probably had incomplete reduction of the vanadium in the first place. So not all of the so vanadium in solution was vanadium-4 when you filtered it through the glass wool. And the other main reason is that, um, as most of you discovered, it's quite difficult to get all of the vanadium out of the glass wool. If you looked in the waste container um, at the front of the lab when you'd finished, you'd see that the glass wool waste container had an awful lot of vanadium solution in it. It was quite green. Um, and this is basically vanadium which is lost to your experiment by getting trapped in the glass wool. So unless you wrung out the glass wool very carefully to try and remove all the last strips of vanadium, you probably had less vanadium than you thought you did in the conical flask into which you did the titration, and therefore you used slightly less permanganate than you would otherwise expect. So overall, the main areas for improvement in the practical write-up are um, trying to, to make some sort of attempt at quantifying the errors as to um, how close your results were to the expected results, um, and offering some sort of sensible explanation for, for those differences, although most of you did manage some sort of explanation there. Quite a lot of you didn't get the right species in solution for vanadium-4 and vanadium-5, so you must consider uh, that they are VO2 plus for the vanadium-5 and VO2 plus for the vanadium-4. So you've got to make sure you get those species right in solution in order to create um, the correct set of balanced equations. Um, and another thing that, as I said, none of you did was account for what happened when you added the uh, vanadium-5 to the vanadium-2 in experiment B. One other point I want to make is that uh, you should never ever tear pages out of your lab book. Your lab book is supposed to be a record of exactly what you did and everything you did in the lab session. It doesn't matter if it's untidy. Uh, it doesn't matter if you think some of the things that you wrote down weren't important or possibly even were wrong. I'd rather see them all because you don't know that they're unimportant until later on. There might have been important observations on those pages which you didn't write up when you wrote it neatly. Um, so you must always leave those pages in the book. Um, if you want to put a pencil line through them and then say you've written it up neater on the following pages, that's fine. But I would really like to see uh, the original notes that you made in the lab session in your lab book. So I hope you found this short feedback session useful. If anybody's got any further questions, please don't hesitate to drop me an email or ask me after one of the lectures or in the next lab session before you have to complete the summative write-up. Made with DoodleCast Pro.